Okay, I'll call this meeting to order at 7 o'clock. First up, adoption of the agenda. Anybody like? Councillor Sloshberger, all in favor of adopting the agenda as presented? Opposed? None. Carried. Just Minutes from regular meeting, September 28th. Any questions? <laughs> Moved by Councillor Carlson. Any questions? Anything arising? All in favor of accepting as presented? Carried. You made that one. <laughs> Action items. Number one correspondence. The Honorable Jason Nixon, Minister of Environment and Parks. It's a letter about the uh, coal regulations, that, an answer to the letter we sent. I don't know if there's much to discuss, but anything, any comments? Nothing productive. Nothing productive in the letter. Nothing I can repeat here. Yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll take that for information. Number two, correspondence. The Honorable Tracy Allard, Minister of Municipal Affairs, Municipal Operating Support Transfer. Marion. Yes, so this is part of the uh, Provincial Government Safe Restart Agreement between um, Alberta, well, the provinces, and the Government of Canada. So there was money transferred to the provinces uh, due to the COVID response and um, that is now being distributed to the municipalities. Our funding amount will be $387,759, and that's to be used for any additional expenses we may have had due to COVID, um, but also we can use it for revenue shortfalls, like our arena being closed for a period of time or the pool being closed any of that. So we'll be looking at um, where we have some shortfalls in our 2020 budget and we'll have to report that back to the government but we're sure that we can use up those funds. Thanks. We have already signed the agreement and sent it back to the province. Number three corresponds to Alberta AUMA Interim Alberta Police Advisory Board Survey. Marion. Yes, so they were asking for a survey uh, with the new interim Alberta Police Advisory Board and they're asking municipalities to just submit one survey per municipality. They're due on October 19th. It's my understanding from the mayor that uh, when he received the survey, he filled it in and sent it back on behalf of council. So um, maybe you want to speak to some of the comments you made in there as to I didn't bring a copy of what I wrote. But you can read through it. Uh, I know I wasn't, um, I didn't express any joy in, my, in the survey answers. I think it's a drain on the municipal budget. I think it's a way for the province to pass down their policing expenses. And I believe we will get nothing out of it in the long run. And that's, we've all had these, we had these discussions. I based it upon what all we've been discussing. I didn't, I, I understood it was for me to do the way I received it. Because it came addressed to me and so I just went ahead and did it. But I did answer it according to what our, conversations our conversations over the past two months on this. Number four, correspondence, Inclusion Foothills. Marion. Yes, so Inclusion Foothills <coughs> just sent a letter um, asking Council to consider adopting policies to make sure that all people in the community with any type of disability would be included, um, especially if we're doing virtual meetings because those can become more difficult than when they're in the audience. Um, but they're asking for council to consider when we do do, when we have virtual meetings, that we have a closed caption for the hearing impaired. Um, that would be somewhat difficult for us to do with our live stream uh, based on the technology that we use because that would be fairly expensive technology to try and incorporate into our live stream. And can I ask, is it possible or 
yeah, is it even a possibility when we get moved into new building with the new technology that that would even be, or does it just feel like, yeah, you know? I don't see the, I mean, it's a lot of money even if we have the technology. We still have to buy the program that will well, interpret it to. And right. I'm assuming it's probably a standard that's in larger municipalities. I don't even know if it is a standard in larger municipalities. I mean, you'll see it on, on you know, TV for the, yeah. the major networks, but I don't know of any municipalities that are doing that. Mm -hmm. Now, maybe Calgary or Edmonton doing that. Well, there's so few that televise. I've never watched their council <laughs> Like even Most of the political stuff I've seen that's been going on, like not just political stuff, but it seems to be going more and more is you've got your CC, which is a lot of movies and stuff, but generally all the other stuff. Yeah, Closed caption. So like you have sign an language. ASL, an ASL <coughs> member there. Yeah, they have a sign language specialist there. Mm -hmm. But that's provincial and federal, and they're reaching out to a bigger base than us. Yeah, sure. I think you got to live within your resources. Just we just don't have that. For us. Well, that's the other thing. If she were to be here, you'd have to center the camera on her, and that's all yeah. you'd be seeing. So yeah. then we may as well not televise everything else happening. Yeah. I don't know if the council's ever had any requests either uh, that it's been a concern in the community. Yeah. I haven't ever received it. I haven't been approached by anybody. I think we just take it for information. Okay, moving on, number five, correspondence. Royal Canadian Legion, Branch 41. The poppy fund request, again this year, they'd like to pin the first poppy on the mayor. So, uh, what's the date? Uh, the 30th. So will our speak be for you? Or are you I think I can make that, yep. Number six, request for decision. Clarkson Library Board, MD Representative, Marion. <coughs> so the Library Board had a vacancy for the MD Representative, so um, the process to be followed is because they're appointed by the MD, but it's our Library Board, so then they have to be officially mm -hmm. appointed by Council by way of resolution. So um, at their last meeting, the MD had an application from Ashley Oliver, um, and they passed a, mo a motion to put forward her name to the town as one of the MD's representatives on the board. They have two positions. One of them is Derry Markle as a counselor, and then they're suggesting or recommending that Ashley Oliver be appointed. So we would need a resolution of council to support that. I'll make a motion. Councilor Schultz. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Request for decision. Clear some library donations. Marion. <coughs> yes, so um, the library has a couple of projects that, um, that they've been working on donations for, and one is the Improve Ergonomics Project, it's called, and the other is for the Joan Mackin Murder Mystery Collection. So uh, the library is not a registered charity with the CRA, and so they're not able to issue official receipts, uh, charitable receipts, but the town can issue those receipts as long as we control the funds, and it's for a purpose that would benefit the community or the town. Um, and so there has been $5,000 donated uh, for the Improve Ergonomics program um, or project. And then there's also been um, a minimum donation of $200 for the Joan Mack and Murder Mystery uh, collection. So what happens is we take the donations, we issue the tax receipt, and then we forward those funds to the library. <coughs> So uh, we just need two motions to acknowledge that council supports the projects, um, that there's benefit to the community, and uh, we can issue those receipts. I'll make that motion. The $5,000 one? Okay, question? 
Moved by Councilor Schlossberger to donate $5,000 to the Crescent Libraries and Improve Ergonomics Project. All in favor? Carry it. Who'd like to make the next? I can make the Councilor Carlson. For Joan Mackin. Question? Moved by <coughs> Councilor Carlson to donate a minimum of $200 to the Crescent Libraries Joan Mackin Murder Mystery Collections and that this donation be increased by the amount of any additional donations received by the town for this project. All in favor? Carried. Request for decision, Claire's Home Child Care Society grant application. Marion. Yes, so the, um, we've discussed the uh, need for the, the exterior uh, rehabilitation of the after school program building with the Child Care Society board or their staff. Um, and um, they're willing to make an application to the Community Foundation of Lethbridge for the up to $15,000 to help with the cost of, this, of uh, residing that building. Um, as council's aware, when we did the, the review, or some of the council members are aware, when we went for a tour of those facilities, um, it was identified that that building is in need of repair sooner rather than later. Um, <coughs> the uh, Child Care Society is not a registered charity, uh, which is a requirement of the Community Foundation, so we need to partner with them so that the funds can come through the town. Um, and also, uh, we also have to commit to the balance of the funding. So in our recommendation right now, we've just got it to come from general reserves. But if there is funding available, uh, at the end of the year, we may not have to take it out of reserves, but we do need um, a letter of support that uh, needs to go to the Child Care Society by tomorrow because the deadline for applications is Wednesday at 4 o'clock. I'll make the motion. Councillor Schultz, question. Moved by Councillor Schultz to partner at, with as the fund's managing partner and support the Thurston Child Care Society's grant application to the Community Foundation of Lethbridge in southwestern Alberta for the residing of the existing portable buildings with the remainder of the project cost to be funded from general reserves. All in favor? Carry. Request for decision. Policy update. Marion. <coughs> All right, so we have a couple of policies that administration is recommending there be some changes to. First is the um, policy PRO T 1010, which is to fire, fire department charges. So we have bylaw 1705, which is fire protection bylaw, which addresses the issues that are also addressed in the policy. Um, a bylaw supersedes a policy, so there's no need for that policy to be in place. So we're requesting that that policy be rescinded. This again is just a cleanup of some of our policies as we continue that. Um, the second is the miscellaneous fees and facility rent policy. So we're recommending that there be an amendment to that. First with the sale or the transfer of the airport facility to the MD. Uh, we don't, no longer require any rental rates for the terminal building or the runways at the airport. And also, um, the daycare and play school rent is set by contract, not by policy. So uh, we needed to amend that policy to remove both of those from the policy. So we would be looking for two resolutions from council, one to repeal the fire department charges policy, and the second to uh, adopt the updated miscellaneous fees policy. <coughs> Any questions? Councillor Cutler, are you making a motion? Yeah, I'll move to the first one. Question. Moved by Councillor Cutler to repeal the policy 5.3.90 fire department charges policy, which was previously PROT 10, 10, effective October 13th, 2020. All in favor? Carried. I make a motion to adopt the updated policy of 5.9.05. Question. Moved by Councillor Zimmer to adopt <coughs> updated policy, policy number 5.9.05, miscellaneous peace policy, effective October 13, 2020. All in favor? Carried. 
Information brief, stockpile enforcement. Marion. Um, yes, yeah, so we did inform council that we had uh, issued an order on the stockpile of dirt um, on a property just east of the um, Cottonwood property. Um, just for your information, we have received an appeal on that stock order. And so that is going to the Subdivision and Development Appeal Board on October 27th at 10 a.m. We will have that at the lodge room at the um, community hall to ensure that we have the space for the proper social distancing. And uh, if any of council wants to attend, we need to know that because we need to notify Old Man River um, so that they can allocate the appropriate space there. I will be attending, Tara will be attending. Um, if anyone else is interested, mm -hmm. just let Tara know or let me know and uh, we can notify with you. We only know by the end of the week. Yes. Okay. If you've never seen yeah. a subdivision and development appeal, which doesn't happen very often, this is the first time um, here since I've been employed here. Um, you know, you might find it interesting to see what the process is. Would you mind sending out an email as a reminder so that I can, because I don't have my phone in my calendar, but I've sure. got to take some training, so I'm really curious. I'd like to see if I can. Well I'll send in. out a calendar request and you can just Perfect. respond um, and that way Tara will know who's coming. Perfect. Yeah, what time? 10. 10. On the 27th, October 27th. Is, is there a time frame on it? Like how long those things take? They take as long as the <laughs> evidence takes. The evidence is presented by both sides, mm -hmm. and then the um, the board deliberates. And they don't have to make their decision that day. They have a period of time to make their decisions. Okay, moving on. Information brief. S strategic plan report, Marion. Uh, just an update on where things are at with uh, the council's strategic plan. Um, a lot of things have been accomplished this last year, lots of complete. There's a number of things in there that are ongoing because uh, they're, they're cyclical in nature. Or, um, and so we, we will continue to work on some of those. But uh, overall, I think we're doing pretty good on trying to accomplish the strategies that councils put forward. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I really appreciate the breakdown and seeing this. Thank you. Thanks to all your staff. Yeah, that's who does it. <laughs> okay. Council resolutions. Any questions? Information, uh, no, adoption of, in, well, the information items. Any questions on the information items? I'll make a motion to adopt the information items. Before we make a motion on that, we had another uh, incident at a meeting on Thursday last week, and the uh, girl that used to do the secretarial work for Cardston County was there. And she says those should not be adopted like it's just part of your information package and we that's the same as that guy that came here said at, at the time when we had the uh, Roberts rules gentleman here to do that presentation mm -hmm. with council yeah. uh, one of the reasons that council decided that they still wanted to pass the motion was to identify in the minutes that they actually reviewed those information items yeah. so you know they don't have to be adopted but they can be adopted as reviewed or something to that effect or I mean it's it's entirely up to council whether it's well, that's why I bring it up because she indicated and she's the new secretary for Orsk she indicated that it's not even legal to adopt things that aren't supposed to be adopted so I just bring the question here before we do this what everybody thinks I don't one way or another I'm fine with it I don't think it's no I'm fine with it being adopted but I like it okay yeah. then councillor Zimmer has a motion 
All in favor? Carried. I just thought I'd bring it up. Okay, motion to go in camera. That was pretty much a tie, so. Ladies first. Ladies first. Counts. Yeah, Counts for Schultz. Okay, motion. Everybody agree to go on camera? Get camera off, please. Okay, if we get a motion to come out of in camera. I'd like to make a motion. <laughs> in the year too early. No. Councilor Schultz, all in favor? <laughs> Carried. Uh, the only thing that came out of that was, um, do we even need to address that? Nothing. The, boule the boulevard? No? Yeah. So I guess uh, there was nothing in in camera that requests or needs a uh, motion. So like Councilor Carlson. Um. Oh. Go ahead, Mary. No, that's okay. It, just letting you know that we're going to record in the in the minutes. Um, the CAO evaluation was done in camera. Okay. Yeah, because I didn't think it's mm -hmm. on record. I didn't think we needed to say that anything about it. So, okay. So, Councillor Carlson has moved to adjourn. So, all in favor? We are adjourned. Camera off, please. <laughs>